for the past year and a half, I have been uh, part of this data exchange in the process industry group. And uh, here I'm going to briefly talk about what was the problem, why this group was formed, and uh, some background to uh, what is the basis of this work, and then how this information model could interoperate with the OPC UA. So here we have been talking about Industry 4.0, we have been talking about the Internet of Things, Industrial Internet of Things, and all these ideas, some very nice standards, but practically what we need is industrial adoption. So if software vendors don't really jump into these technologies and produce tools like these big vendors that owner operators trust, they don't start supporting this actively, then there's very little progress in interoperability apart from nice academic papers and work. <coughs> of course, the business interest of software vendors is to, at least the short term, or maybe short-sighted interest of software vendors is to keep companies locked into their platforms. So within their platforms, you can easily move data, but when you want to jump from one platform to the other, then there starts to be a problem. But this problem now becomes an issue when we want to access the data from a third-party point of view. We want to use the data to provide added value. So it's even more of a problem now in the Industry 4.0 context. <clears throat> so a few words about the ISO 5596 standard. This is the basis of the work done in the Dexby group. So it's a standard about integration of life cycle data for process plants. It, is, it has started from the oils and oil and gas industry, but of course it can be applied to process modeling in general. So this was started by the POSISC Caesar Association, a non-standard, a non-profit <laughs> global standardization organization. And one of the first groups that were working on this standard was the IRING Tools user group. So sometimes IRING is used as a name of this for this standard. The first approach that they used was to just transfer pieces of information between software tools. Not the whole diagram, but maybe just some variables, just some attributes. A few words about the Proteus schema. So, the <clears throat> this kind of specification specializes the 15926 standard in a way that it's practically useful for the companies. And uh, the way to store this information is the Proteus XML. So that's how this Proteus schema comes to the picture. It used to be called XMPlant, and many companies know it by this name, but that was a, a protected name, so now the open name is Proteus. Uh, it used to be a Fiatech project, and then fr that project generated the latest version of the schema. Now this schema is maintained by a Fiatec project called Information Models and Produce Mappings. This exemplant used to be uh, managed by the Numenon consultant company, but now uh, the rights have been transferred. So what's the goal of the Dexby group? So they want to create a standard for transferring piping and instrumentation diagram information, the whole diagram, between software vendors. So if a PNID diagram is created in a, a smart plant PNID, they want to be able to open it uh, in AutoCAD PNID uh, or in Siemens Commons. <clears throat> What's the history of this DEXP, where, where does it belong? So DEHEMA is a non-profit organization, basically 
from chemical engineering. Uh, they have an initiative called ProcessNet, and this DEXP is a working party of this initiative. So the members of this DEXP group, uh, there are three kinds of members. First, there are big owner operators, big names like BASF, Bayer, Evonik. Uh, then there are some members that support the work, so this iScape is supporting by maintaining the Proteus, by, by doing some practical work in maintaining the Proteus schema. And then Aachen University is also providing support for the schema and the specification. Then we have software vendors. Many of the big names are here. Autodesk, Aviva, Intergraph, Siemens. Xvisual is a smaller, smaller company uh, which has a tool based on Visio. Bentley has stated that they are not going forwards for this Proteus schema, but they are going to provide some kind of transformation from a pure 59 to 6 export that they have to uh, Proteus. And recently, there was an announcement by Dassault Systems that they are starting with uh, XM Plant. <coughs> and, uh, the further partners are Air Liquid. This is a small subcontractor company, a subcontractor company, sorry. And uh, we are also members in this group. So the structure is as such. Owner operators are kind of motivating the software vendors to come together and build in their tools the Proteus export import functionality. So uh, ideally not through transformers, but as a building nati native data format. So <clears throat> they, have a, they have already some versions of the DEXP, DEXP specification that describes how this data format looks like. The current, okay, there was a little error here. This is the old presentation that, that is opened. But uh, the current version of the specification is 1.0. So already there are some processes started like um, every six weeks there is a meeting uh, in Frankfurt, more or less, to follow up the progress of the vendors and discuss issues with the specification. Then there is a management group meeting every year that at a very high level uh, companies monitor the progress of the group. Then uh, there, is, there is a couple of years, a couple of times per year, there is a hackathon event where uh, software vendors come in with their developers and try to practically solve any issues with interoperability uh, through these three days. And then they have started a beta testing uh, session for the past few months where big companies, they have already taken these latest beta components from vendors and they are trying to do tests with their own diagrams. <clears throat> Practically, the progress is very uh, clear. So they have separated the PNID diagrams into equipment, piping, label symbols, and instrumentation. The specification is, is ready. Uh, apart from the instrumentation part that is now under progress. The schema is in very good shape. There is very rarely now a need to make changes to the schema. So <clears throat> the collaboration is mainly done through the, this workspace. Now, Everybody has the opportunity to create test cases based on their own examples, where everybody else could try to import and export and make some bug reports and see how, how it goes. So the progress now has started speeding up towards uh, having something more real in the tools. The DEXP also provides a verificator. It used to be only an uh, online verificator where someone could upload a Proteus XML file, this verificator would uh, 
uh, check it against the latest schema, and then report any kind of errors it would find, and then for everything that was correct, it would display the PNID that it thinks that was in the file. Nowadays, there is also a, an offline version of this verificator. So, <clears throat> how does this now relate to OPC UA? Since we have this kind of schema, we have this uh, data format for, the, for storing the piping instrumentation diagrams, it makes a lot of sense to use this information also, not only for interoperability between tools, but also for all kinds of applications that we might have as a third party uh, developer. So, uh, <clears throat> this is really the essence of, of uh, Industry 4.0, not just being closed into, into a specific life cycle phase, but then get this data for other uses. The progress uh, has started since the beginning of the year to build an OPC UA companion specification for the DEXP specification. Uh, at first it was a little bit slow, then we had some brief uh, uh, delays, but now uh, it seems that all the problems have been resolved and apart from some bureaucracy that needs to be filled up, uh, things are on track and very soon we're going to get the green light uh, from all the parties that are, that are concerned. Uh, VTT uh, has committed to have the key role in this effort and basically prepare the mapping, of course, with the help of the DEXP group and the OPC Foundation. <clears throat> we are starting this as a joint effort. So this means that we are actively collaborating with the OPC Foundation and we're going to use know-how that the OPC Foundation can provide. We're not going to have it only as a DEXP group <coughs> specification. And uh, so far, uh, the, our, our interaction with the OPC Foundation has been very, very excellent, very fast and very easy, no, no problems. Of course, this is not the first time that we have been thinking of mappings between OPC UA and uh, the DEXP Proteus format. We have done this kind of work in research projects in the past using uh, our own uh, proof of concept mappings and we have seen that it is pretty much possible to read, to access piping and instrumentation data over OPC UA. So in this case, we use the transformer from the OPC UA, from the <coughs> Proteus format to an OPC UA address space, and then we use the process SDK to create the OPC UA server. And then we, could, we had access to all data that was present in the Proteus XML file. <coughs> there was one more slide before the thank you. So the, so the slide that is missing was that why, why, do we, why do we even need this? Okay, so why do we need an OPC UA server for the piping and instrumentation data or for any other kind of data for that matter? So it goes into a big picture that we want to be able to have a unified access to data from all aspects of the, of the plant. So might be 3D data, 2D data, might be maintenance data, operational data, uh, auto, uh, automation data, uh, all kinds, of, all kinds of aspects uh, need to be accessed in a unified way so that we can not only monitor them. Okay, monitoring is something that we can do in a straightforward way, but also use this information uh, to, to reason about the situation of the plant, make decisions, uh, and uh, support all kinds of services that are on top of this Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 idea. Uh, because otherwise, if we have uh, ad hoc connections to all these different uh, data sources, then this is a non-maintainable solution. It might work for a project and might have a nice demo with specific versions of specific tools, 
But then one year later, it's broken. And no one's willing to maintain such a thing. So I think that uh, very soon we're going to get the good news that we have green light from all parties, and we are going to start working on this uh, new OPC UA specification for the DEXP specification. If you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer.